I platinumed Horizon Forbidden West and it has a few trophies you need to watch out for. So I will tell you everything you need to know before tackling this generational open world game. If you're looking for a great open world game to platinum that is easy, fun and extremely immersive and gorgeous to look at, then this might be something for you. Set in the post-apocalyptic world of the US, Horizon Forbidden West continues the story and gameplay of the original game. Because of that, the trophy requirements will be pretty much identical to the first game. So you won't be in for any major surprises in that regard. It will take you around 40 hours to platinum, with a small chunk of that being post main story gameplay. This will be things like side quests, exploration and combat. As like most AAA PlayStation Studio games, you can pretty much platinum this game without a guide. But the one I used every so often was from Power Picks and Peers and Profiles. This was mostly for the specific side quest trophies, which I will touch on in a bit, and various other collectible trophies, but other than that, pretty much as easy as can be. This game truly does showcase how good a PlayStation 5 game can look. It has insane graphics, you can play on various graphic mode, such as the frame rate mode or the resolution mode. I always prefer to play on the frame rate mode because it smoothens out the gameplay so much more. It is also one of the few games that has really good dual sense support for triggers and vibrations. And although the story wasn't as strong as the original in my opinion, the rich environment and details in the game really make up for that. Although there are technically no missable trophies, it's worth keeping an eye out for the Spectre and Corruptor machines, as those are technically missable, but there are enough opportunities to scan them along the way, so don't be too worried. You'll encounter them throughout the main story and various other side quests as well. One of the trophies you need to watch out for are the side quests, because there are a ton of them. I only did the ones that are necessary from the main story characters, which are the ones that are required for the trophies as well. But there are so many that you encounter along the way that you don't even need to do all of them. Of course, these do help you level up and gain experience and upgrades, however they don't count towards any trophies, so I only did the ones from the main story, and the rest weren't very inspiring to me. Most were just similar to side quests that you see in Assassin's Creed games and were super generic. The cutscenes didn't engage with me as much and the quests were pretty repetitive. Although some definitely do add to the story, it just didn't click with me unfortunately. That's why for the most part I only stuck to the ones that were necessary. Next up are gauntlet runs, which are basically races, and they're pretty cool. They offer something different and are basically a race that is similar to maybe a GTA race. You can kick someone off their mount, you can shoot arrows at them, you have boosts, and it really offers a very different type of gameplay that we didn't see much before. I actually really like them, but all you need to do for this trophy is win two of them, and they're super easy and fun, so this shouldn't be any problem. Arena challenges and melee pits are a great way to test your combat skills, so make of that what you will. If you want to get these done quickly, I suggest you upgrade the warrior tree, as this will give you more combos to use in these fights. This can help you out and it will make the fight a lot easier. A similar trophy is the hunting grounds. These were quite fun and are basically challenges that you need to complete against other machines. This is quite fun and can be quite difficult as well, because you definitely do need to prepare for the ones later on. Make sure to bring your best armor and weapons and have everything upgraded that you want, because you will need to get all three challenges done at each hunting ground. Now this wouldn't be a trophy list without the obligatory collectibles. Thankfully it's not too bad in this game, you only need to do 5 collectibles, and there are collectibles in survey drones, vista points, black boxes and signal towers. Although only 5 of them are necessary, you'll encounter a lot of them along the way, and they're quite fun to explore as well. They offer some backstory and a little bit of extra lore to see what's going on inside the world of Horizon Forbidden West. I actually quite enjoyed them and liked looking at them to see what they showed. Another trophy you can keep in the back of your head is the pouches upgrades. You don't need to upgrade every single pouch, only the food, potion, resource, trap and ammo pouch. These can help you in your gameplay and will make fighting easier. But they're also needed for the trophy and because not all of the pouches are necessary for the upgrades, I suggest you only look for resources that you need for each individual pouch and these will help you upgrade towards the ones necessary more quickly. So if you're only going for the platinum trophy in this game, I only suggest you focus on these and gather the resources that you need. To get these resources, you'll need to be killing a lot of wildlife along your routes to various missions, for example, and this will help save a lot of grinding later on. And in my opinion, the stupidest trophy was the strike challenges, which requires you to win two rounds in the board game. 
It doesn't take a lot of time, it's not too difficult, however, it's incredibly boring in my opinion. I wasn't too interested in trying to understand the true gameplay of it, so I just did it as quickly as possible, and maybe that's a little bit naive of me. However, the first two that are available on the east side of the map are definitely the easiest opponents. So you don't need to buy any extra upgrades, figures or anything else for this. You can just do this as quickly as possible. However, you might want to skip a few of the cutscenes. And although the story wasn't as strong as the first one in my opinion, I can only speak high praise of this game. Its world is dense and beautiful, which makes exploring exciting to do. The combat was satisfying and rewarding to do with some of the best sound design I've heard in any video game. So if this appeals to you, then I would suggest you check this out. It's a great trophy hunting experience. And even if you've already completed the main story, there's no missables, so you can just carry on and go for that platinum along the way anyway. If you want to find out more about the trophy experience in other games, make sure to check out my other videos. And that's it for now. See ya.